So in this video, we are going to be installing a brand new acrylic tub. This is a 20 inch deep by 32 inch wide standard 60 inch. Stay tuned. So in a lot of cases, when we're working in a job site and we're changing the tub or tub surround, the idea here is to try to minimize the scope of work. Unfortunately, in this situation, the client wanted to go from a standard 30 inch wide to a 32 inch wide. And so that creates a lot of little nuances that we're going to cover in this tub installation video. Because if you can install a larger tub into an existing smaller space, you can install any tub on the planet. Okay, so let's get started. I just wanted to point out first before we get moving about the quality of the of the tub that we're using. This is a Maryland tub. It's called the Tucson. The 32 inch is called the Tucson. This has got an acrylic tub, but it's a sprayed fiberglass reinforced acrylic. Okay, this is extremely strong and it's a, it's a little bit more advanced than some of the products that are available on the shelf of the building store. So keep an eye out for this because the price point is really minimal. For an extra 30 or $40, you can get a high quality acrylic tub instead of something that's gonna have a lot of deflection and risk cracking over time. Okay, so you'll notice that this is a little piece of chipboard plywood, reinforced, all sprayed and glued together. But this is the skirt, and this is the translates a lot of the load on the front side of the tub. And when this is all sprayed together with the fiberglass, it makes it incredibly strong. You'll also notice on the back side, there are a series of wooden block feet here, and that directly translates the weight of the tub when it's full of water to the subfloor underneath so that you don't risk getting any cracks around the drain. Without those feet, this ends up opening up and splitting a lot of times. And this crack here is not a crack that you can fix with the repair guy. Okay, they might come and fix it for you, but it will crack again. So the only way to avoid that is to buy a tub that has these reinforced feet. Don't rely on the skirt to take care of all the weight. You need to give support to the bottom of the tub. So the one thing you need to take care of before you start the idea of putting in a larger tub than what you have now is you need to understand which direction your floor joists are running. If you don't have access from underneath to see exactly the proximity of them, you run the risk of this. There could be a floor joist right here. And if that's the case, when you open this up, remember that your, your tub drain is going to be moving to a new center location. And if it's right on the, where the joist is, then you're not going to be able to put that install there without compromising your joist strength. And that's a brand new world. Now you can do this, but you need to get that engineered. And it's a really big expense. Otherwise, you're going to have creaks and cracks and movement going on maybe damage in the ceiling underneath. So the way you can check that out is go to the heat re register vent in the bathroom, put your arm down the hole and see which way the elbow goes. Okay. And which way the elbow goes will be the same direction as the joist. If they're running this way into the tub, you're going to have lots of room in your cavity to move your plumbing to the new location guaranteed. So the other thing you need to keep in mind is the framing around the tub. Remember when you're framing around a tub, traditionally you're going to want to have wood backing, off the corner of the tub so you can attach your your overhead shower rod or even future if you're going to put in glass or a door kit you want to have wood there you don't want to rely on the strength of the wallboard and the tile to support that so we want to make sure we reframe we also want to add whatever blocking at the same time for our shower features the less work we do after the tub is installed the better um, outside of that, I think if we've cut all the basics covered, make sure to check the level of the floor. When they built the house originally, it may have been level, but every house settles in the middle because it's wood. It'll all shrink just a little bit. There's almost guaranteed to be a slope. And if you want your tub perfectly level, you're going to have to do some shimming. So keep that in mind as well. So there's really three things that we need to do when we're putting a larger tub into an existing smaller hole. One is we have to open up the subfloor to reconnect the drain. Two, we have to eliminate this, all this plumbing and start all over again. And the third thing is we have to cut back the tile and the underlayment so the tub can fit in inside of that area. Like I said, when the house gets a little older, it tends to slope in the middle. And if I try to level this tub now, I'll be flush on the outside wall and I got almost a half an inch gap difference here. By cutting all this back and creating a new line, I can install this tub and have nothing but a silicone joint available to the naked eye later. Okay. 
So what we've done is we've opened up a bit of a can of confusion here. What I thought was the pipe leading for the drain turned out to be the pipe only going to the vent. This drain pipe actually does a P-trap, comes back here, down through the joist, and then back to the drain, which, you know, contradicts what I definitely would have done as far as my process, but that's fine. What I've done is I've gone out and I've bought this brass drain kit. And the reason I bought this is because of the flexibility. I need to move my drain to a new location around here. But all of the fittings in this plumbing here are joint to joint to joint. And although I'm able to take that off, it's just really labor time consuming. So this now enables me to change from this pipe over. I can put on this new T that's a brass, put this pipe to where it goes center. I can come off the existing pipe right here and I can actually snake in the corner of this pipe here which is awesome. So I can get that extra inch and a half out of it just by bending my copper neck. This enables me to do all my plumbing, have it leak proof, and it's a lot quicker. Now it's only an extra $15 more than the APS drain system. So I suggest buying this all the time. You don't always need to use it, but when you do need to use it, it's nice to already have it. All right, now, in order to cut this all out, I'm gonna be pulling out my handy dandy rigid inch and a half pipe cutter try to get as much of this pipe cut as I can and you just stick it on the pipe it has a sharp tooth on it and it slices through the ABS you know if I'm lucky I put it right up to the fitting go at it from both directions it'll almost complete the cut now the secret to doing good plumbing is cutting perpendicular and trying to cut in here with this saw might be a little tricky and I could always lay it right in here and fish it back and forth but it's a little too big and cumbersome. So I went out and I bought myself this cute little hacksaw for just occasions like this. I can actually get in here. You know, this is going to take a minute. But it'll get the job done. And then once you get three quarters of the way through, it'll generally just give up the ghost. Okay, so you don't need to clean ABS fittings with sand cloth, but I can't see what's going on in behind there. So I'm just making sure that I've got any of the old solvent out of the way. So all I gotta do, generously apply the solvent to both pieces. And without wasting too much time, push and twist, get that on there nice and tight. Okay, so now we just gotta prep up our brass drain kit. This is all compression fits with some positions there's gaskets some of it's just thread like here so when it's just thread i use a pipe joint compound this acts like a sealer let me put that back in where it came from nice and tight okay now these other joints it's just a washer and a nut system all right so what we're going to do now is just measure off where this goes, we'll loosen up this collar. When we have the ability to raise or lower this, okay, according to the dimensions on the tub, which is awesome. You'll see how this operates here. You put the ring on first, and then the washer, okay, goes in afterwards. Okay, so we slip this over, and it's a nice snug fit. And the thing here is, we now have to cut this pipe to fit. All right, that's not my final location. Before we put the lift of the tub out, we mark the center drain on the floor. All right, and so we've got the dimensions on that. It's nine off the wall and 17 off that wall. So what I do is I'm gonna go in here now. Let's see what this pipe is. That is nine, that is not 17. So in order to get it over to this location, I've gotta make this pipe shorter. So, what we want to do is go like this now, and we're measuring to the center hole. Eyeball this bad boy. Yeah, that's going to be good there. Okay, so I eyeball, that's about the edge of where my pipe goes. You can see that inside this fitting, there is room for that pipe to be extended. Okay. I'll mark it just so you can see. 
I have a half inch of play. So if that's what I'm guessing, I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to go to quarter inch of play. I also have the ability for this to move around just a little bit on me. So that'll make it real easy to install the tub. Okay. All right. And then we just take the hacksaw and cut that off. This is one of these cases where having some sand cloth is brilliant. It makes it a lot easier to put the fitting on. Okay, so we're in. Put the ring on, put the gasket on. I mean, this is snug. It's really difficult to do with the gloves on. There we go. Okay, here we are. Now, uh, again, we're just still doing the rough fit here. We haven't connected or tightened up any of the fittings. 17 right there. And right there. And right there. Okay, now the other thing we have to do is find out how far off the ground that tub is going to be. Because we were using this type of drain system, we were actually able to tie into the original ABS that was coming out. Um, we've locked on the collar, adjusted all of our pipes, we created our center point here of 17 and 9, and we created our center point here just according to the dimensions on the tub. Well, the only thing left to do now is just cut back the tile. I've got a beautiful porcelain tile bit on here. I picked this up in my uh, tile supply store. Cost me 35 bucks. You can get something comparable in the hardware store for about 60. And uh, we're just going to run the vacuum and cut this out. Make sure you protect yourself because you're going to have flying stone going everywhere. Hit it. Material. That's good. There, I like that. So Matt's just going to install some vapor barrier here for us. He's got a great little trick, it looks like, for doing this if you're a little short. There you go. Hey, I like that. I'm going to use that one day. <laughs> so we have got our extra framing in the wall. We've got our drain done. We've got our floor cut back so that we're ready to drop the tub in. So we're ready to install our tub finally. We've got our plumbing rough in, tied into the wall, our drain is assembled, our floor is cut back, our framing is done, the vapor barrier is intact, and we've gotten all this point without expanding the scope of work outside of the fact that we had to cut the floor. So, so far it's a good day. All right. Now, there is no one way to do this. You are going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. Just remember the back side and the, the each end are open. So you have the ability to do a little bit of twisting and rolling when you're trying to get these into position. The key is to hold it off the ground the entire time until you're ready to set it down the last few inches. So you don't accidentally put too much pressure on one of the corners of the skirt, which will always be visible. And if you break that, you gotta go buy a new tub. Okay. There we go. So we're flush up against this. There's our drain. That'll be perfect. This is on the flexible connection, so we can put that in place later. So now that we have our tub in place and we're solid, we want to connect all of the plumbing before we connect the tub to the walls. And I'll tell you why, because the plumbing has only got so much flexibility down here. Um, I want to get this one mounted, the drain, and then I want to connect the overflow, which is on the flexible neck. So that'll work out really well. What we got is you got to take care of one thing here, and that is this protective plastic. And now I'm only mentioning this because everybody who's ever got into building things and putting in plumbing for the first time, until you've had a leak and you found out it's because of this plastic was in the way, 
you don't know that you need to remove it. <laughs> so I'm going to save you that problem. Get the plastic out of the way. You don't want to have any of that protective plastic where you're putting your fixtures. So you want to get your white silicone that's designed for kitchens and baths. And you want to get it on your thread here in a couple of lines. And you want to put it just a thin layer around the seal here. On their first attempt of doing this series of plumbing in the bathroom, we had a few plumbers come in and they chimed in with the fact that this particular style of acrylic tub is not conducive with the old-fashioned plumber putty. And apparently there's some concern that the putty will break down the acrylic over time. So they suggest using this the bathroom silicone. So now you take your tub tool and we're causing compression on that rubber gasket that's underneath up to the tub surface. We're just going to lift that up until it's nice and tight. Here we go. And once we have it snug, we'll throw a screwdriver across the top and give an extra, an extra half a turn. All right, now at this point, wipe out the extra silicone. It's not necessary to be in there anymore. Now we got that one done. I always put my drain cap in right away, make sure it's covered up. Now, here's my overflow, and I'm just gonna reach in behind and put my gasket back in place now. Very difficult to install the tub and not knock this off. <laughs> now, you can see I'm a little bit low. I'm just gonna tug on that neck extension until I'm right where I want it. And this is where this kit comes in real handy. A lot of overflow systems um, have a little bar and you tighten it up with a drill and you just gotta get it in the right spot. And you may or may not have it good contact. This one actually has a threaded cap that goes over top. And so this one here gives you the ability, just go backwards until you feel it sit in and then you go forward. That way you won't cross thread. I'm actually not in there right. There we go. If after you turn it a couple of times and it's giving you a, hard, a lot of resistance, you might be cross threads. So just back it off and try it again. Now you can use the tub tool here as well. Okay, as a screwdriver, you can see on here there's a couple of prongs. Gives you something to tighten it up against. And you're just going to find that middle point. And because the back of that overflow is flexible, it'll not just move up and down, but also twist side to side so that you can get a perfect compression right there. Okay. Now, if at any point you're concerned at all about leaking, you can, as a management tactic, you can actually silicone around that. This plastic to the acrylic can be siliconed and create a secondary seal. But the finish on this actually has this really cool little thing. It's a little different look from OS and B. And it has a slotted groove that goes over top of the edge of that. Now, how sleek is that? Not seeing any screws. Very sexy. Now, it's inevitable whenever you're installing a tub. Um, one of the things we joke about in our business is we never find a room that's square. You'll never find an alcove that's square. So once you've done, drop in some shims all the way around the tub. And that is where you will put your screws to attach the tub to the wall. Once you've done attaching it, cut off the shims, remove them out of the way. If you're concerned at all about uh, the acrylic breaking, you can actually get a pilot drill and just drill a small little hole before you put your screw. I suggest flooring screws because they're coated and they won't rust as fast. Um, but if you really want to go crazy, you could always buy stainless steel. And here we go. Once we've got that all set up, that's more than one shim thick. <laughs> Here we go. These are actually ACQ. These are deck screws, but they'll do the same thing. And you'll see, it gets started and it'll drill its own hole. And you can run it almost flush, okay? Don't go too crazy with this because you will crack it. And that's all you need. Yeah, perfect. So once you get that in, here we go. 
now we got this tub is installed. All right, so that covers everything you need to know about installing the tub. Don't forget, the last thing we have to do here is actually cut the shims off because our wall board's gonna come down and sit right on top of the integrated tile flange. Your tile will come all the way down and sit on this ledge, all right? So if you enjoyed this kind of video, then by all means like it. Uh, if you haven't joined the club yet, then sign up and, and join our subscription to the channel. Don't forget to turn your notifications on. We have videos coming out every Saturday night at 9. And <clears throat> good luck.